opening day in Minnesota, and we're not talking about just the Twins. Centennial outlasted Blaine last year in a shootout. We'll see if the pitching is as improved as the weather as we have a cat clash to open the 2024 season here in Circle Pines. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Bill Hupp. Pleased to be bringing you opening day here from Centennial, the season opener for both Centennial and Blaine. These two teams played a wild game last year where Blaine scored nine in the ninth but still fell short, losing at home 14-12. to We'll see if the bats are as hot this season. And they'll be led as we take a look at some of the highlights from last year in a wild game. Centennial got off to a fantastic start at Paul Parkway. The bats were hot early for the Cougars as they piled on the runs and took an early lead, taking advantage of some defensive miscues for the Bengals. But Blaine in the ninth would string together nine straight runs with some key extra base hits and some timely two out hitting. Ultimately, however, it would not be enough. Bengals fall just short, losing 14 to 12 in the second game of the season last year. This year, however, they're led by junior first baseman Carter Amols. He had fantastic numbers last year, leading the team in average in RBIs. He's a big power bat, batting cleanup this year for Blaine, and he'll be one of the big sticks they look for in their lineup this year. Meanwhile, for the Cougars, they're led by Peyton Streit, the senior shortstop, led them with uh, hits last year, led them in RBIs as well. A really key figure both defensively and in the leadoff spot for Centennial. And he is the straw that stirs the drink for this Cougars offense here on opening day. Should be a fun one coming up. First pitch next on North Metro TV.
The snow melting here at Centennial High School. It's things warming up and uh, no very little wind right now. It's sunny. It's in the low 50s, maybe the high 40s. And we are ready for baseball here. The NWSC opens up. Opening game for both teams. As you look at, take a look at the Blaine batting order today, it'll be uh, Wilson Guzzi, the second baseman, leading off, followed by the pitcher, Ethan Pettis. Carson Tim bats third and plays in right field. The cleanup hitter will be Carter Amos. He plays first base. Derek Schloman will be the batting fifth in left field. Cooper Conrad will be at the hot corner, batting sixth. Miles Clark, the DH, and Plankers and Burley to round out the lineup. Now we'll take a look at the Centennial defense. Harper, Gunderman, and Sieg left to right. On the infield, it's uh, Gruy, Strite, Escobedo, Coppersmith, and a battery of Aiden Leeser and Brandon Hemmer. Leeser on the mound, you see him. He'll get the ball on opening day here. And Centennial in their familiar red and white, sharp-looking uniforms against Blaine, debuting the new gray pinstripes to start things off, and it'll be... Wilson Guzzi, the second baseman, to lead things off here in the game and for the season for Blaine. These are rocks and fires, and he gets a strike over the inside corner. Oh, and won the count. Lefty righty matchup to start. The pitch swung on and missed, and Guzzi finds himself down quickly in the count. 0 2. He was even with the bag at third. Now he backs up. Yo two pitch taken just high and outside. Sun keeps kind of fading in and out, and it drops about five degrees every time it goes away. It's out right now, though, as we begin play. 
Here's the one-two pitch. Called strike three on the outside corner. I'm sure Guzzi loved it, but he goes down looking to start the, start the game. Frame job there by the catcher, Hammer. Brings up the pitcher, Ethan Pettis. One of the best hitters on this Blaine team. A captain, a four-year starter. A good base, uh, basketball player as well, of course. One of the best three-point shooters in the state. Want to know the count? Here's the pitch. That one misses outside. And the count runs to 2-0. Rocks and fires, and it's swung on and fouled on back. Pettis batting in the two hole. Carson Tim, the right fielder, waits on deck. Here's the pitch. Over for a strike. Counts even at two and two. Pettis, his dad, Lance Pettis, the head coach of the basketball team. His brother also on the team this year. Here's the 2-2 pitch. It's shot foul on the right side. Centennial finished 15-10 and 10 last year. The Bengals 13-10. and 10. Centennial made it all the way to the Section 7 Class 4A final before losing in a shootout eight to seven to Anoka. One missing high and inside, the count's full. Anoka with a couple college-bound players. Cougars falling just short of the state tournament. Here's the three-two pitch called, strike three. And Leeser has set the first two Bengals down looking here in the top of the first. Fastball dotted right at the knees. Pettis tried to sell it, but I certainly think he knew that he was dead to rights. So that pitch fouled off here as Carson Tim, the right fielder, stands in. These are with a, an effective uh, first inning here. Tim batting from the left side. Here's the pitch, taken high. When he's missed today, early on at least, he's missed high. Leaser delivers and missed high again. It's two and one. The dangerous Carter Amals stands on deck. Leaser on this chilly day. Wearing the long sleeves like most of his teammates. Here's the 2 1 pitch. Inside, it's 3 and 1. Tim, one of the leading hitters on this Blaine team. Saw some time last year as a sophomore. Here's the pitch. Outside, any issues of first base on ball of the game. So Tim with a well-earned walk, and he stands at first base for the cleanup hit of the first baseman, Carter Amals. Big power hitter, couple home runs. 27 knocked in last year. Slightly open stance from the right side. Late on that one. 0 oh and 1 the count. Not bothered by the cold today. Amals rocking the short sleeves. Here's the pitch. And Amals swings and hits it out to right center field. That's going to be down to the right center field gap. They're waving around Tim. Here comes the relay throw. And it's off line, it's too high, and Tim slides in with the first run of the game. Carter Amals, a right center field gapper, 
An RBI double with two outs here in the first. Drives in Tim all the way from first base. They might have had a play had the throw been on line, but it was high, and that allowed Tim to slide in. The power of Carter Amals. He stands at second after that RBI double. And Derek Schloman, the left fielder, stands at the plate. Down the count, 0-1. I beg your pardon, one and up. You just trip up with one camel, but it takes all of them. One nothing our score. As a called strike on the inside corner. Blaine leads it. Thanks to the RBI double. That base on ball coming back to haunt the pitcher, Aiden Leeser. Pops the mitt, but take taken high. It's 2-0. Oh. Meanwhile, the scoreboard is out, so they're trying to fix the scoreboard, which uh, may explain why our graphic is, is not updated. Yep, we are indeed tied to it. So we'll, this will be radio style. It's one nothing with two outs. Yep, they fixed it now. The count is three and one. For those of you keeping score at home. Weezer got the first two men by strikeout. Here's the pitch on the inside corner. Good frame job again by Hemmer. Weezer struck out the first two batters, but then he walked Tim, and Amals drove Tim in with a ringing double to right center field. Here's the 3-2 pitch. Called strike three on the outside corner. And the third straight Bengal, third Bengal of the inning rather, to go down looking as Leeser ends up escaping the danger, but uh, certainly Blaine grateful to get anything from it as Carter Amulls, we highlighted him in the open and sure enough, he smoked a double to right center field and drove in his teammate Tim. So three strikeouts in the inning, a hit, a walk, a run scored, and a man left. And after a half inning, Blaine leads it 1-0. They will send out Ethan Pettis to start. Pettis, like we said, a four-year starter, a, a co-captain. Really, really been an asset over the years to this Bengals program. Is that Carter Amals responsible for the lone run of that inning? As we take a look at the batting order for the Cougars, they'll have Peyton Streit, the shortstop, leading off. Caden Coppersmith bats second. Leeser, the pitcher, bats third. The outfielders bat six through eight, Gunderman, Harper, and Sieg. And uh, Escobedo and Rui round out the order for Centennial. We highlighted him in the open. And Peyton Strike stands in. Strike, a senior, takes a called strike on the inside corner. They're giving them. The umpire is giving that strike to the pitchers. Strike. As we said, second on the team in hits last year, led the team in RBIs. As Pettis misses low. Strike wearing the single arm. Uh, cut off. 1-1 one, one pitch, he shoots it towards third. It eats up the third baseman, Conrad, and Strike's gonna be aboard. I have to imagine they're going to rule that a hit and not a single as we take a look at the defensive alignment for Blaine, Schloman, Plankers, and Tim left to right. On the infield, it's Conrad, Burley, Guzzi, and Amels, and Pettis and McLean are the battery. They are indeed calling that a hit, so straight aboard with a single, and that brings up the first baseman, Caden Coppersmith. Pettis misses outside with that pitch. Very chattery, 
Centennial dugout. Strike leads from first. He is a threat to steal. That offering from Pettis misses look. Two and the count. Lead off runner is Peyton Streit, who reached via a hot shot to third infield single. Pettis now pitching, of course, from the stretch. To Coppersmith. This is low. It's 3-0. Pettis, a senior veteran ball player, certainly will not be rattled by this road environment. Checks the runner strike and delivers the three up. Taken a little high, and he walks him on four straight pitches. So just like that, Centennial has the first two batters aboard as McLean goes out to give his pitcher a little tap. Up the pitcher, Aiden Leeser. Leeser struck out the side in the first inning, but he did give up an earned run. Playing Conrad in on the grass just in case he decides to bunt. Does turn to square, offers at it, and misses. Strike one. Cougars on first and second here. We said last year it was a 14-12 game, so plenty of offense. Pettis sets, holds, and delivers. Ooh, that's close. That's at the belt, but they don't give it to him. So Pettis struggling with the strike zone a little bit here in the bottom of the first. Two on, nobody out. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Back up the middle, back through the box, over second base. They'll hold the runner at third. The bases are loaded here with nobody out in the bottom of the first. Hot shot from Leisure, who smoked it back up the middle, and they wisely decided to hold straight at third to play for the big inning. As you see this, rifled right back up the middle. Pettis had to duck to get out of the way. Jack D'Agostino now with a real opportunity, the designated hitter. One of the mainstays of this Cougars order the last couple years. Nobody out, bases loaded here in the bottom of the first. Pettis pumps over a strike. Early kind of dancing behind Coppersmith at second base. Here's the pitch, and it's fouled off. And so Pettis manages to get ahead of Diagostino, two or 0 and 2. Center fielder Luke Gunderman waiting on deck. able to go back to the windup here. This is high and outside with that one. Here's the one-two pitch from Pettis. Holds up, checked his swing, it's three and one, or two and two, excuse me. Blaine and Centennial softball tangling on the Centennial softball field here. Two to the count, bases loaded, nobody out. Here's the pitch, bounced in, it's three and two. So Diagostino has managed to come all the way back from being down 0-2 to a full count. He worked the count full, there's nowhere to put him. Just take their leads. Here's the 3-2 pitch. Called, strike three on the outside corner. Neither 
Well, the hitters have been uh, thrilled with the strike zone, but that's a massive strikeout here by Pettis to retire the first Cougar of the inning. To be fair, it seems like they've given that outside corner. It's been a generous strike zone in the early going. So now it's up to the center fielder, Luke Gunderman, with one out and the base is still loaded. Went a little outside. Interestingly, four strikeouts in the game so far between the two teams, and each one of them have been looking. Pettis holds, now he rocks and fires, and that's a called strike on the outside corner. That's a big thing when the up has a generous strike zone because you can really pound it and, and live on the edges. Just like that. Kids looking right now, a little tentative, not swinging away. Gunderman down in the count, one and two. Here's the pitch. It's shot the other way into right center field for a base hit. It's down the light field line, two runs are in. Centennial leads it, and they've still got runners on the corners. Luke Gunderman. Shoots it down the right field line. Doesn't try to do too much. And he has a two RBI single to give Centennial the lead. Strite and Coppersmith came around to score. As Everett Harper takes a called strike. Leisure moves into third. Now we'll see if Gunderman tries to steal and move up to second. Check on him. Harper, of course, one of the best running backs in the state, playing left field on the baseball team. He's late on that fastball. And down in the count, 0-2. The 0-2 pitch, high and outside. Leisure on third, Gunderman at first after his two RBI single. 2-1, Cougars lead it. That one over the inside corner called strike three. So again, all five outs in the first inning have been recorded via called strikeout. Protect if it's close, I guess. Brings up the right fielder, Noel C. Noel Sieg, the uh, seventh hitter in the order. And he swings and hits it on the ground to third, scooped up by Conrad, over to first in time to retire the side. But Centennial. Three hits, two left, they score two, and after one inning of play, the Cougars lead it 2-1. An apple core, or potato peels, that leftover pizza you promised you'd eat. Ew. Those dirty napkins and paper towels. Stop treating us like garbage. Did you know up to 30% of what you're throwing away could be composted? Composting gives your discards new life, which can be used to improve soil. To learn more about the new organics drop-off programs available throughout the county and get your free starter kit, go to anokacounty.us slash organics. Centennial High School, the site of the season opener here in 2024 between Northwest Suburban Conference rivals Blaine and Centennial. As Aiden Leisure goes to work in this, his second inning. With his uh, team leading it two to one. Leisure trying to have a clean inning after giving up a uh, run on a hit and a walk in that first. Bengals gave two right back. Centennial put together some 
nice at bats. It'll be six, seven, and eight in the order for the Bengals. Here in the second, Conrad, Clark, and Plankers to face Leisure. Sun keeps uh, playing hide and seek here. Cooper Conrad, the third baseman, will stand in. Conrad is shooing the batting gloves. A lot of lefties in this lineup against the right-hander Leisure. Conrad has made the only assist, or the only put out of the game. Everything else has been a called uh, strikeout. Speaking of that, he looks at a called strike. And he's down in the count early. Leisure working quickly, rocks and fires and misses outside. We're in the top of the second. Centennial leads it two to one. Here's the pitch. And he's late on the fastball. First strike two. Leisure with that. Almost Blaine Blue glove. That's wrapped foul at the plate. I'm just saying it would fit in well if he was a Bengal. Outfield shading them a little bit in center field toward left. Punches it foul, so he stays alive one and two. Here's the pitch. That breaking ball missed high. It's two and two. Feels good to be doing baseball. Here's the pitch. Swung on and missed. He chased a high one. And Leisure has set all four Bengals down via the strikeout. Brings up the designated hitter, Miles Clark. Play him straight away. Clark fans through that one for strike one. They have not timed up Leisure's fastball. So he's throwing well in the early going. Misses high right there. The 1-1 pitch, swung on and missed. Bengals starting to uh, be a little more aggressive, but. Here's the 1-2 pitch, inside, 2-2. Two and two. There is a breeze, but it's ever so slight. Here's the 2-2, and it's popped in the air. Right side giving chase, and just out of the reach of the right fielder, C. Matthew Plankers, the center fielder part-time quarterback for the Bengals last year. One of their leading wide receivers on the football team will be next. Here's the pitch, it's wrapped on the ground to third, it hits the bag. And the umpire called it foul. Ted Erickson, the manager, can't believe it. And I think, I don't know if he said, hey, that's now the umps are going to have a conference. They thought they'd caught a break because it hit the base, and by rule, that, I believe that's a fair ball when it hits third base. It was kind of trending. It hit the in out uh, the outside of the base, but yep, 
and they indeed give him a single, and now it's Centennial's turn to debate. Obviously, you could see with the line, the way the ball was spinning, it was going left, but it hit the base, and now Gruy and uh, Ted Erickson having a, a friendly chat. So that'll bring up uh, Matthew Plankers with a man aboard and one out here in the top of the second. Tough luck for Centennial, but by the letter of the law, correct. So the center fielder Plankers, not surprised, a good athlete, can really go and track it down. Open stance from the right side. That one gets by the catcher, Hemmer. And moving up to second goes Clark. Again with traffic on the base pass as he misses high with that delivery. Two and all the count with a run on second. One out here in the top of the second. Here's the 2-0 pitch. It's foul on back. Two and one the count, two one the score. Leisure checks the runner. Now he pitches over the inside corner for a strike. Evens the count at two and two and two. Here's the pitch, fouled off by Plankers. Opportunity here for the Bengals to tie the score with a runner in scoring position. Here's the 2-2 pitch from Leisure. Low, and the count runs full. One out, one on here in the top of the second. The three-two pitch, and he hits it out to right field, chasing back Sieg, and it will, it's gone, it's a home run! Matthew Plankers goes yard to straightaway right field. A two-run shot. And Plain regains the lead here in the top of the second. First at bat of the year, Plankers goes yard. And might we see a repeat of the offensive explosion in this game last year. We're off to a good start this year. 3-2 on the two-run homer by Matthew Plankers. So now Leisure's got to regroup, and he fires that one past Ryan Burley, the shortstop. I kind of had a feeling that when I said, hey, they can tie things up, I was like, well, they could also technically take the lead. But with Plankers, you know, batting in the eighth spot, I didn't necessarily foresee a home run. He, there are a couple fans out there, and the only two sitting along the fence, basically, and he hit it right to them. As again, Burley this time goes down on strikes. 
fifth strikeout of the game. Every out has so far recorded by Leisure has been a strikeout, but he's also given up three runs. That turns over the uh, top of the order. Turns over the lineup to the top of the order for Wilson Guzzi. He struck out looking. So two outs, two in after Burley struck out swinging. Guzzi late on that fastball. Trying to regroup now after he Struck out looking in the uh, top of the first. Here's the 0-1. Got the 0-2. It's uh, one and two now. What a shot in the arm for Blaine to have the eighth hitter put him back on top. Here's a called strike on the outside corner to end the inning. But the Bengals retake the lead. Two hits, two runs. Matthew Plankers takes Aiden Leisure out. Shooting it the other way, an opposite field, two-run blast. And the Bengals have a 3-2 lead after an inning and a half. Wash your hands for 20 seconds, just like Elmo. To Sofia and Gabriel. Even though these old knees can't follow on your adventure to the forest today, these flowers represent my love. These stitches and threads join us together. And wherever you see a flower, a bird, a beautiful tree, know that my love is with you. Make the forest part of your story at a park near you. Find one at discovertheforest.org. Matthew Plankers giving Bengals the Bengals a 3-2 lead here as we begin the bottom of the second inning. Ethan Pettis fires to Ty Escobedo, the second baseman. Escobedo, the eight hitter, swings and shoots it to left center field. It'll go down and then misplayed by Plankers, Escobedo Rounds first aggressively, but only holds with a single. Brings up the nine hitter, Tyler Gruy, the third baseman. Eight, nine, and one in the order for Centennial here in the bottom of the second. And they get the lead runner aboard for the second straight inning. And three hits last inning. Four now. Rui lays down a beautiful bunt, charging in from third. Conrad, throw to first, in time. A terrific barehanded play at third base by Cooper Conrad. Getting a star on that one, but the sacrifice does move the runner into scoring position. Rolls things over to the top of the order for Peyton Strite. Strite and an infield single to start the game and then came around to score on a two-run single by Luke Gunderman. So a 5-3 sacrifice bunt right there. What a beautiful bunt it was, though. Great play all around. Beautiful drag bunt down the, uh, or push bunt, really, down the third base line. He hugged the third baseline, but Conrad came in and made a terrific play. 
Back up the middle, off the mound, ranging to his left. Beautiful diving stop to keep it in the infield by Burley. But Streit is aboard for the second time today with an infield single. Burley, though, diving behind the bag at second base, managed to keep the ball on the infield and hold the runner at third. So runners at the corners now, one out. For the number two hitter, Caden Coppersmith, he walked and scored a run in the top of the first, or bottom of the first, excuse me. He looks a called strike on the inside corner. Runners at the corners, one out, two, three, and four. The next hitters for Centennial. That one's low and outside. For Smith, officially 0 for 0 with a walk and a run. He swings and hits it to short. Burley to second for one, on to first. In time, a beautiful 6-4-3 double play to end the inning. So the Blaine defense shows up big time, and they have a 3-2 lead after two innings of play. I want to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. I need to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. Why can't I eat, eat, eat apples and bananas? Support the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks to help provide meals to those in need. Join us at feedingamerica.org. Regardless of where you are on your path to retirement, you can still take charge of your financial future today. Visit aceyourretirement.org and answer a few questions from Avo, your friendly digital retirement coach. For free tips, resources, and advice customized for your situation to help you feel confident and prepared for retirement. Retirement looks different for everyone. Make sure you're prepared for your financial future at aceyourretirement.org. Dogs day here at the uh, ballpark in Circle Pines. Hope he finds what he or she finds, whatever they're looking for. Not only on this ground, but in life. If I knew more about dogs, I would know what kind of breed that thing was. Some sort of spaniel, I'm going to say. 3-2 our score after two innings of play. The Blaine defense coming to the fore. A beautiful 5-3 uh, put out uh, for the first out of the inning. Then Ryan Burley started a nice 6-4-3 double play to end it. As we will have 2-3-4 uh, and four in the order here in the top of the third. And we have a new pitcher on the mound. Josh Lee has taken over on the bump for uh, Centennial. Big number 19. And some massive plays for the football team that eventually won the state championship. Lee expected to be one of Centennial's better pitchers this year, the ace of the staff. And uh, he gets the ball. Leisure did throw a lot of pitches. But, I mean, he gave up three earned runs in two innings, but he also Struck out six, so his line for the day. Now it, Centennial manager is conferring. Josh Lee is on the mound. There's a little bit of confusion, though, because he's supposed to be wearing number 14. He's wearing 19. He wears 19 in football. 
And because yours truly is such a versatile broadcaster for North Metro TV, I automatically associated Josh Lee with number 19. And turns out the roster was wrong, and I was correct. That's a feather in my cap as Lee misses inside to Pettis. So Josh Lee is on the mound. And uh, that was the delay in the inning beginning. So the line on Asian Lee, excuse me, as uh, that was pumped over for a strike. The line on Aiden Leisure, two innings pitch, three hits, three runs. They were all earned. A walk and six strikeouts for the Centennial starter. He drops down, kind of side arms it, and Pettis fouls it off at the plate. Pettis was a strikeout victim looking in the top of the first. So I'm going to count one and two here to lead off the third. Here's the pitch, and Pettis hits it in the air to center field. Gunderman moves in and puts the squeeze on it for out number one. So Pettis flies out, first fly ball out we've had of the game. Flies out to uh, Gunderman in center field. Brings up Carson Tim. He walked and scored the first run of the game in the top of the first. Takes that offering from Josh Lee high. Three runs on three hits, no errors for Blaine. Two runs on five hits, no errors for Centennial. You wonder if this switch was made just because they didn't want the game to get away from him. Here's the pitch. Called strike on the outside corner. Good frame job again by Emmert. Here's the pitch. Lee misses outside with that one. Two to the count. the pitch swung on and missed and Josh Lee fans the first bat of the afternoon his first bat of the afternoon I should specify seventh strikeout of the game already for Blaine not even through three Carter Amels is again just late just late on that fastball Amels with an RBI double he was stranded at second but he had the big blow in the first inning to give Blaine its first lead. They lead it 3-2 here as he looked at a called strike. Big bopper from the right side. Fists that one foul. And he's quickly down in the count, 0-2. JV and varsity games for baseball and softball between Blaine and Centennial. Ongoing, Mull swings and rips it again to right center field. This time, Sieg is there, and he camps under it and makes the catch to retire the side. One, two, three, go the Bengals in the top of the third. To the bottom half we go, three, two, they lead it. When you adopt a shelter pet, you discover their unique mix of all kinds of traits. Where'd Wiley go? Where's Wiley? Ah, oh, there she is. Pa? Do you remember being an ancient wolf? Do you ever feel the call of the wild? You're a renegade cop, and I'm a con woman with nothing to prove. But together, we could really solve this murder. They're a little bit of a lot of things. But all of them are pure love. Something more than a birthday is happening here. Once you can see it, you can help. 
The sooner you recognize the signs of autism, the sooner you can make a lifetime of difference for your child. Start by answering a few simple questions at screenforautism.org. Ethan Pettis goes to work here in the bottom of the third against Aiden Leisure. And Leisure swings and belts it into left center field. That'll get down and roll all the way to the wall. Plankers comes and collects it, but not before Leisure strolls into second with a leadoff double here for the Cougars. Leisure may not be pitching anymore, but he is still doing damage with the bat. He's now two for two with a single and a double to start his 2024 season. He was stranded at third base in the first, but now he stands on second with nobody out for Jack D'Agostino. He struck out looking in the first. Cougars cleanup hitter with an opportunity to tie this game or give their, his team the lead. Pettis misses inside. What I was saying before is that, yeah, you've got two JV games and two varsity games going on between and Centennial in baseball and softball. So four battles, uh, four cat clashes ongoing right now on this uh, cool but clear and sunny April afternoon. Not bad for early April. Agostino swings and smokes it towards Plankers in center. He reaches up and makes a fantastic running catch in the right center field gap to rob D'Agostino of extra bases. Terrific play out there by Matthew Plankers. First out of the inning. D'Agostino got some good I was going to say good wood, but their bats are like composite, so good metal on that. As uh, Luke Gunderman takes a strike, he had the big blow in the first inning, a two RBI single to give Centennial a short-lived two-to-one lead. Runner on second with one out. Here's the pitch. Wrapped on the ground to third, stopped by a diving Conrad over to first, bouncing throw. I believe he said safe. First baseman uh, Amuls couldn't hold on to it. So now runners are at the corners. And uh, pitching coach for Blaine coming out. To talk to his team with uh, Maverick Harper waiting on deck. Not an error, they give Luke Gunderman a base hit, so Gunderman now two for two to start the season with a couple knocked in. Harper struck out looking for the second out of the inning. Feels surprisingly quiet today, and I, that's because there's no walk-up music for anybody. Normally, home teams, are very often they'll have walk-up music and little things to play, but uh, it's very... Not an overwhelming experience here, which I'm okay with. Runners at the corners, one out. Harper stands in. Here's the pitch. First pitch swinging on the ground to short. Burley up with it to second for one. On to first. Dugout, double play, 6-4-3. Beautifully turned by the Blaine defense once more. Does drive in a run, so we're tied at three. But uh, the Bengals take the two outs for the run. Oh, no, they say he dropped it. Beg your pardon. The Mulls has uh, dropped it. Otherwise, that would have gotten them out of the inning. So the fielder's choice knocks in a run. Now there's runners at the corners for Josh Lee. As we take a look at the uh, failed double play, Burley to second for one over to first. And again, Amals just couldn't dig it out, or he did, but I believe Harper may have beaten it out. 
A lot happening in that play. Leisure ultimately was the one who scored to tie this game at three. Gunderman was erased on the double play. Harper, it's a six, four, three fielder's choice. And now Josh Lee. The pitcher batting here. Slightly open stance, pretty open stance, in fact, from the right side. Here's the 2 1. Late on that fastball, and it's 2 and 2. Two hits in the inning, a run in for Centennial. We shoots that foul toward our truck. 3 3 here in the bottom of the third. Strike three on the outside corner. And uh, Pettis sets him down to end the inning. 3-3 three, three our score after three, and it's been a highlight-filled first three innings between Blaine and Centennial nearing the midway point of this season opening game here at home. As we take a look at the highlights so far, Carter Amoles knocked in the first run with a two out RBI double, scoring Tim. And then, like we said, Gunderson with a well placed two RBI single in the bottom of the first to give Centennial a 2 1 lead. But in the second, Matthew Plankers, the eighth hitter in the order, had a two run Jimmy Jack and Blaine. Took a 3-2 lead before Centennial just answered the bell. Aiden Leisure, a leadoff double, and he eventually scored on the fielder's choice. Lee eventually striking out, looking to end the inning. So in that inning was a run, and it was earned. Two hits, no errors, and one left on base. So Centennial's left four on base in the early going, three runs on seven hits. Blaine, three runs on three hits, a couple walks, hurting uh, Aiden Leisure. So now Josh Lee is on in relief. Lee tossed a scoreless third, and now he'll look to, uh, again, hold the Bengals at bay, keep his team in the game. For a while, I thought we were headed for another 14-12 barn burner, but uh, Right now, it certainly looks like a little more defensive minded than last year. Five, six, seven in the order. Schloman, Conrad, and Clark for the Bengals as Lee misses outside with that delivery. Ethan Pettis has settled in nicely. He's getting ground balls, and his defense is turning them into outs. But missing low and inside. Two and oh, the count. Sloman, 0 for 1 today. He struck out looking to end the first. Here's the pitch. Called strike on the outside corner. It's getting that high and outside strike. And the hitters have to react accordingly. Here's the 2 1 pitch. Right at the knees, another called strike. come back from 2-0 to 2-2. Here's the pitch. Sidearm effort misses low and outside. It's 3-2. and two. Full count with nobody out. Here's the pitch. Tentative swing. And Schloman goes down on strikes for the second time this afternoon. Brings up Cooper Conrad. He led off the second with a strikeout. Leisure, three runs, three hits. Three runs on uh, three hits and a walk, but he did strike out six, all six batters he faced. First pitch swinging, fouled off at the plate. 
Conrad has been active defensively, though, in this game. Lee, a safety and wide receiver for the football team. Made a couple massive plays in the state semifinals and state championship. Here's the pitch. Taken high and outside. Lee working quickly. 3-3 the score here. Here's the 1-1 pitch. Wrapped foul at the plate. Got pretty blue skies here now, but the sun has disappeared behind the clouds. In the top of the fourth, here's the pitch. Swung on. And the first baseman Cooper, Coppersmith rather, takes care of it by himself. So three unassisted for those keeping score at home. And quickly, there's two outs in the inning. Right now, Lee has come on and done, done the job. He's retired all five Bengals that he's faced. Brings up the designated hitter, Miles Clark. Clark singled and scored in the second. Came around on that two-run homer by Matthew Plankers, who stands on deck. Lee, once again, falling behind a Bengal hitter, 2-0. and Working quickly, though. Here's the pitch. The 2 1. Called strike. Bent a breaking ball over, and once again, he's battled back to even the count at two. Clark, one for one, a single and a run scored. Here's the 2 2 pitch. Swung on and poked foul. Uniform guy, both these teams sport nice, nice uniforms. Particularly like Blaine's, I think, but both are nice. Here's the pitch, swung on and missed. And Miles Clark goes down on strikes. No runs, no hits, nobody left. To the bottom of the fourth, we go 3 3 here at Centennial. thinking I need a job I need a new career well I've been there I've been there I've been there I wasn't happy with what I was doing after high school I didn't have a plan I just wanted to start working I got laid off twice but you got to keep going you just need the right skills find an apprenticeship I found a two-year IT program I found a medical course online I'm now a consultant in the tech space you have more options than you think you can do this you will find something you will find something new Bottom of the fourth, set to begin as Ty Escobedo leads off for the second time today. Let off the second with a single and then was stranded at third. Ethan Pettis beginning his fourth inning of work and he quickly tosses two strikes to the diminutive second baseman for the Cougars. Here's the 0-2. He reaches for it, hits it to Conrad at third. He's up with it. The first in time for the first out of the inning. Defense has been solid, particularly on that left side of the infield for the Bengals. 5-3 on the putout. Brings up Tyler Gruy, the third baseman. 
laid down a beautiful sacrifice bunt. Beautiful 5-3 uh, drag bunt that uh, Killer Conrad came in and made the play. So he is uh, officially 0 for 0 today. Pitchers have really settled in here as they've put up goose eggs for the most part ever since the middle of the second. Count one and one. One out, nobody on. Here's the pitch. Bounced in for ball two. I think it'll be off. Top of the order next as Peyton Strike waits on deck. And one shot toward the first base coach. Called strike three over the outside corner. Gruy set down looking. Pettis racking up the strikeouts fourth of the day for him. Great frame job by McLean. Another looking strikeout. Rolls it over for Peyton Strike. He looks at a called strike. Strike two for two today. A pair of singles and a run score. Takes that one high and wide. Doing what a leadoff hitter should do, getting aboard. Making things happen. He shoots that one towards short. Burley to his left. On the first in time to retire the side. One, two, three. Go the Cougars in the bottom of the fourth. Four in the books, 3-3 three, three our score. Hi everyone, Al Roker here. As a guy with his own catchphrase, I appreciate that Smokey's only said, only you can prevent wildfires. But I'm filling in because there's a lot more to report. Like when there are parched or windy conditions out there, you gotta be extra careful with things like burning yard waste. After all, wildfires can start anywhere even in your neck of the woods. Go to SmokeyBear.com to learn more about wildfire prevention. How prepared is your family if disaster shows up at your doorstep? You can't just turn away a natural disaster. That's why it's important to go to ready.gov slash plan before they show up. It has the tools and tips you need to make an emergency plan with your family. So if disaster comes knocking, let's go. You'll be ready to help keep your family safe. It's just a pizza. Yes. Make a plan today. It's a fun afternoon here at Centennial High School. When the sun's out and the wind isn't blowing, mighty nice as we start the top of the fifth, Josh Lee has uh, pitched beautifully, retired all six batters that he's faced here in his two innings of work in relief of Aiden Leisure. Matthew Plankers, the center fielder, climbs in the box. He hit a two-run homer in his only plate appearance so far this season. <laughs> Off the catcher's glove for a ball. Eight, nine, and one in the order. Plankers, Burley, and Wilson Guzzi do up for the Bengals. Checks his swing and takes it outside, ball two. Flankers went opposite field for that home run. Not something you see too often. He swings and hits it fouled on the left field line. Good athlete, like we said, a wide receiver, leading wide receiver on this Bengals football team. The 2-1 pitch. And again, he fouls it at the plate to even the count at two. Four. 
season opener for both teams. Here's the pitch. Right back up the middle, and Lee snags it, snares it, spears it, whatever you want to say. He makes the play. Or out number one. Fielding your position, something that's key, and Plankers gave it, hit it on a line, but right at Lee for the first out of the inning. Brings up Ryan Burley, the shortstop. He smokes it to second base. Escobedo tosses the first in plenty of time for out number two. So pretty quickly, two up, two down here in the Blaine half of the fifth. And that brings up uh, Wilson Guzzi, who's had a rough start maybe to his 2024 season. Two plate appearances, two strikeouts looking. Swings at the first pitch, aggressive approach, and shoots it foul. Looks at a called strike on the inside corner. Gruy, even with the bag at third, now he'll back up as a Guzzi down in the count, 0-2 oh with two out and nobody on. Here's the pitch. Check this swing. Lee working quickly on this chilly April day. Here's the pitch. Called strike three and Guzzi set down looking to retire the side. Nine up, nine down for Josh Lee in his three innings of work. Four and a half in the books, 3-3. When I got the opportunity to get her, there wasn't no choice. I told myself, I'm going to take custody of my daughter. It's my baby. That's what we're supposed to do as men. Take care of our home, build a foundation, you know what I'm saying? Love, our money. She's my purpose. I'm here to walk with her, hold her hand until she can walk alone. Ain't nothing like being a father in this world. There are so many rewards in life. You coming into our home was one of the greatest rewards we could have ever had. You know, it took 20 years, and I got my third child, who was 17 at the time. It's so cool to watch the adult that you've become, and you really have done as much for us as you think we've done for you. Three and four in the order here in the centennial half for the fifth inning. As Caden Coppersmith is the first batter, grounded into a uh, double play to end the second. He also walked and scored in the first. Coppersmith, Leisure, and Diagostino do up for the Cougars. Here's the pitch from Pettis, starting his fifth inning of work. He's really settled in, put up goose eggs in two of the last three innings, and has retired uh, five straight. Hit that four straight. Coppersmith swings, hits it to second base. It eats up Goosey, and he has to eat it. Kind of a hot shot. Goosey couldn't make the play. We'll see if they give an error on that one or not. They are going to say second baseman errors. On E4 on Guzzi gets uh, Coppersmith aboard here to lead off again. The leadoff runner has reached in four of the five innings against Pettis. He's pitched from the stretch a lot today. He misses high with that offering to Aiden Leisure, who's been the offensive star for Centennial. Two for two, a single and a double. He's also scored a run in the third. 
game tying run as it were. He swings and hits it to Guzzi at second. Go to short for one, over to first, in time. Four, six, three, double play turned by the Bengals defense. Brings up uh, Jack D'Agostino as quickly there, two up, two down. Guzzi making up for his error by uh, turning that beautiful double play. As uh, D'Agostino, and Pettis has really been helped out by his defense. That's the third double play turn. He's been, they've been really good, especially the last couple innings. D'Agostino lined out hard to Plankers in center and also uh, struck out, so he's 0 for 2. The designated hitter. Pettis blows that fastball by him. One and two the count, two out, nobody on. Here's the pitch. Swings and fouls it off. Blaine has been blanked in uh, three straight innings. Centennial scored a run in the third, but nothing in the second and the fourth. So the pitching and defense has really settled in. Giagostino swings and hits it into right center field, dumps it in front of the right fielder, Tim, for a two-out base hit. So Diagostino will be taken down for a pinch runner. And that brings up number three, Luke Gunderman, who's also had a nice day at the dish. Two for two, two singles. Didn't go anywhere after those singles, but Nonetheless, a two RBI single in the first. He's two for two today. As Pettis waits for him to stand in. Here's the pitch. Called on the inside corner, a strike. Gunderman didn't love it. Two for two, as you see. Two RBIs, two singles for the Cougars center fielder. Check on the runner at first. Oh, that was close. Pinch runner for D'Agostino. That oven mid on his right hand. And he goes. Hit and run on as Gunderman fouls it off. 0-2 oh now the count. Pettis comes set. Here's the 0-2. Runner goes, throw down to second, offline. Good backup by Burley at shortstop. But a stolen base for Centennial. Gunderman down in the count, one and two with a runner at second now. Swung on and missed, and he goes down on strikes. Pettis with his fifth strikeout of the game. Another zero put up. We're through five here at Centennial. All square, 3-3. Three, three. Type 2 diabetes can have a big impact on your life, but how can it be prevented? Well, the first step is knowing if you have prediabetes, a serious medical condition that puts you at high risk for type 2 diabetes. One in three American adults has prediabetes, but more than 80% don't know they have it. The good news is prediabetes can be reversed, and for many people, healthy changes in their daily routine can make a big difference. Take the one-minute risk test today at doihaveprediabetes.org. When I was growing up, my mom was extremely tidy. We were trained to put things back where we got them from. One day, when I walked into my mom's house, I felt like I walked to someone else's house. There was stuff everywhere. And just growing up, the way I grew up, and to see this transition was very alarming. When Sean talked to me, it was a wake-up call, and that's when I went to the doctor.
back here in Circle Pines. 3-3 our score between Centennial and Blaine in the season opener. And they two teams came together and did something really cool. The fourth annual community impact uh, outing benefiting the Centennial Community Food Shelter, Food Shelf, I should say. They raised some money and uh, two teams coming together to do some good in the community. And uh, schools know each other very well. Bengals uh, going to send two, three, and four to the dish here in the top of the sixth inning as it'll be Pettis, Tim, and Amols to face Josh Lee, who has retired all nine Bengals that he's faced since coming on in relief of Aiden Leisure. Bengals, three runs on three hits and an air. Centennial, three runs on eight hits and no airs. First pitch taken inside by Pettis. He's 0 for 2 today. Struck out in the first and then flew out to Gunderman in center. And went at the knees just a little low. Lee has had uh, a habit of, made a habit of falling behind these Bengal hitters, 2 0. He's always come back to get him. Pettis fists that one into right center field. It's going to get down. Turning hard, he'll hold at first as the Cougars get it back in quickly. A leadoff single for Ethan Pettis. That one kind of ate him up, but he managed to have the strength to punch it into right field right in front of Sieg. And now he'll be taken down for a pinch runner. Carson Tim now the batter. He's 0 for 1 officially, walked and scored in the first, struck out in the third. We're in the top of the six, 3-3, a good one here between Blaine and Centennial. Lee checks the runner and delivers. Called strike on the outside corner. It's the guys you want to have at the dish for Blaine with runners on base. Pumps over another strike. And he gets ahead of Tim, 0 and 2. Lee sets and delivers the 0 2. Tim sw smokes it right at the left fielder, Maverick Harpu, makes a nice diving play. Not sure if it got caught up in the sun. The sun is right in the eyes of Harper, but he made a nice read as uh, Centennial will have a mound visit. But a nice play by Harper out there in left field to rob Tim. He's just positioned perfectly. And it forced Pettis to retreat to first base. So one out now and one on. First play made by either left fielder all game. Lee remains in pitching as he faces Carter Amols. Carter Amols has had a nice game, an RBI double in the first. I beg your pardon, that was the second. Uh, second put out recorded by Harper as Amals flew out to him. Wraps that one on the ground to third. Gruy up with it, over to first, high throw, took the first baseman Coppersmith off the bag, so they could have turned a 5-4-3 double play, but Escobedo's throw was a little bit high on the turn, so fielder's choice instead, and Amals reaches. Now we'll have some more late inning substitutions.
and that's going to be it. It's going to be a new pitcher on the mound, so we'll uh, take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll have a new hurler for Centennial. 3-3 our score here in the top of the sixth. Hi, everyone. Al Roker here. As a guy with his own catchphrase, I appreciate that Smokey's only said, Only you can prevent wildfires. But I'm filling in because there's a lot more to report. Like when there are parched or windy conditions out there, you got to be extra careful with things like burning yard waste. After all, wildfires can start anywhere, even in your neck of the woods. Go to SmokeyBear.com to learn more about wildfire prevention. Stand is precise. No margin for error. Dare to forget that. Dare to have fun with it. Get weird with it. Dare to send those old STEM theories flying past the neighbor's house into outer space. Dare to program something internet breaking, record breaking. Dare to blow their minds. Dare to learn the difference between sedimentary and metamorphic rock. Go find those rocks. Dare to keep daring. Dare to STEM. Check out She Can STEM to get started. Luke Gunderman on in relief of Josh Lee, third pitcher of the day for Centennial. He comes on with two outs, so he's hoping to get the last four outs for the Cougars, and longer, I suppose, if, if need be. Is that Derek Schloman, 0 for 2 today, two strikeouts, stands in to face the lefty. Lefty-lefty matchup, and he pumps over a strike. Lee goes three and two thirds, gives up a hit. We'll see about a run. Called strike on the outside corner. He didn't walk a batter and he struck out four. Outstanding relief effort for Josh Lee. Breaking ball misses high and it's one and two. Two out and a runner at first in the form of uh, Carter Amols. Here's the one, two. Popped up and out of play. Still, sun's still pretty high in the sky as we late, le reach the uh, late stages of this ball game. Gunderman pitching from the stretch. Here's the one, two. Breaking ball wrapped on the ground, foul the left field line. And the uh, runner had started at that point. Schloman checking with his uh, manager down at third. Check on the runner at first. Pitch runner is back. Here's the one, two. Lofted out to center field, drifting over, and putting the squeeze on it for the third and final out. So Gunderman comes in, gets his lone batter, and Blaine is retired here in the sixth. The bottom of the sixth we go, still scoreless, or still 3-3, all tied up. Regardless of where you are on your path to retirement, you can still take charge of your financial future today. Visit aceyourretirement.org and answer a few questions from Avo, your friendly digital retirement coach. For free tips, resources, and advice customized for your situation to help you feel confident and prepared for retirement. Retirement looks different for everyone. Make sure you're prepared for your financial future at aceyourretirement.org. Wait a second. Do you know who I am? Julia. Hi. I just wanted to talk to you about what happened with those two girls in eighth grade. Oh, yeah? That one day at PE when they were, like, yelling at me, and then you just linked arms with me. I don't think you know how much, like, that helped me, because, like, I finally, like, knew that I had somebody.
back here on a sunny but chilly April afternoon here. Opening day for the Minnesota Twins and for the high school season as Carter Amals comes in from first base to take over. Amals drove in the first run of the game for Blaine and now he will uh, take over on the hill for Ethan Pettis who Pitched five strong innings, three runs all earned. Did uh, surrender eight hits, three runs on eight hits. We'll tabulate the rest of it here in a moment as uh, Maverick Harper stands in, the left fielder batting from the right side. And swings at the first offering and misses. 3-3 three, three our score here as we begin the bottom of the sixth inning. Centennial hoping to plate one here and then, or more than one, plate some runs here and then uh, close it out in the top of the seventh. Harper today 0 for 2. Struck out looking in the first and then grounded into a 6-4-3 fielder's choice in the third. 0-2 pitch, swung on and missed. Amals with a nasty breaking ball. And Maverick Harper is the first out of the sixth. up uh, Noel Sieg as you see that breaking ball just swung right over it nasty curve ball the first out of the inning Mills pumps over a strike at the knees to Noel Sieg who uh, grounded out to the third baseman Conrad in his only plate appearance that's soft stuff from Amel so far. So the count's even one and one. Sieg has been pretty busy in right field today. Here's the pitch. Looking outside, two and one. Amel's played five innings at first base and now on in relief. A two one pitch. Swung out and hit to center field. Plankers is there and he tracks it down just shy of the warning track for out number two. Plankers, nice range out there in center field. Five strikeouts for Ethan Pettis. And he only walked one. So pretty good numbers. About three runs on eight hits and a walk. They were all earned. Five strikeouts. Scabito, one for two, a single and a ground out. Takes a called strike on the outside corner. Singled in the second, grounded out to the third baseman, Conrad, to lead off the fourth. The 2 1 pitch here from Amals. Called strike on the outside corner. Two and two, two out, nobody on. Here in the bottom of the sixth. Pitch. Breaking ball taken low. Good eye by Escobedo. The nine hitter, Tyler Gruy, will be next. Here's the 3 2 pitch. Called strike three on the outside corner. And the inning is retired. One, two, three. Go the Cougars. Six in the books. Still tied, three apiece. Learn to cough and sneeze with your pal, Grover. <laughs> Step one, realize you're about to sneeze. <laughs> Step two, move your elbow toward your nose and mouth. Step three, Achoo! gazoon tight. One, two, 
three. <laughs> Remember to cough and sneeze into your arm or elbow and not your hands. Pinch hitter for Blaine leading off the seventh and final inning before we had to extras and Luke Gunderman starts him off with a strike. And popped out to right field. Sieg over with it and makes the catch to set down Carter Mackey. Mackey pinch hitting right there for Cooper Conrad. Two pitches in the first out of the inning recorded for Luke Gunderman. Josh Leon, a defensive replacement. First pitch swinging by Miles Clark and he Fouls it off. Clark one for two today. Singled and scored in the second and then struck out to end the fourth. Designated hitter. Takes a pitch outside for ball one. Critical at bats now as he looks at a called strike on the inside corner. Critical at bats. Game has been tied at three since the bottom of the third inning. Off the end of the bat by Clark. First baseman comes over, feeds a hustling Gunderman. Safe. Yeah. Coppersmith moved to his right. It was kind of in between him and Escobedo. Not sure it was advisable for Clark to slide into first like that, but thankfully he's okay. And he beat out a hustling Gunderman. I think he could have just run through the bag, but uh, he got there as the Cougars chatting about that. So the Bengals get a base runner here in the top of the seventh. The infield single by Clark brings up Matthew Plunkers, who uh, gave the Bengals their last lead at 3-2, to two, and he ducks out of the way of a fastball there. 1-0 the count, 1-on, one 1-out one here in the top of the seventh. Lankers has played a nice defensive game. He's homered and then lined out. Looks at a ball outside. Lined right back to the pitcher, Lee, in his last plate appearance. Here's the pitch. Breaking ball misses high. It's 3-0. So Plankers with the green light in the driver's seat. Slightly open stance from the right side. Pitch over for a strike. It's three and one. Blaine have not scored since the Matthew Plankers opposite field home run in the second. Check a runner at first. They got him. Picked off. Miles Clark wandering away, and you got to be careful with that lefty with the pickoff move, and Gunderman picked him off. Good tag placed down by Coppersmith. And Plankers swings and misses at that one. The count's full. So now nobody on the base paths. And two out in the inning just like that. A 3-2 pitch. Plankers fouls it off at the, at the dish. However this ends, I'll be joined by one of the heroes when it's over some post-game interviews. Plankers swings and hits it on the ground to third, right through the wickets. 
of Grier. Rui got down, but just picked his head up quickly. First air of the game on Centennial puts Plankers aboard the speedy Matthew Plankers. E5. Turn to the side, and that one into center field. And actually, that's Caden Coppersmith now at third. Gruy moved over, and Coppersmith is now playing. Swung on and missed here. As we have another pinch hitter for the Bengals in the form of uh, Brandon Bezak. Bezak batting for Burley. And the pickoff throw to first, and Plankers is back. Brandon Bezak off the bench, batting for Burley. So much alliteration. Here's the 1. Breaking ball over, called strike, throw down to second, not in time. Plankers has it stolen. Five gets Plankers down to second, and he swipes a bag, hustling all the way. So now, Owen won the count with two out, and a runner at second base in scoring position. A single would most likely drive Plankers in. Isaac pitch hitting for the shortstop, Ryan Burley. Played a wonderful game defensively for Blaine today. 0-2, two, two out, the pitch. Bezak shoots it down the left field line, but foul. Pretty even game all around. Blaine, three runs on six hits and an air. Centennial, three runs on eight hits and an air. The 0-2 pitch. From Gunderman. On the ground to short. Backhanded by Strike. Over to first in time. Well played defensively by Centennial. An air, but Blaine strands the runner. Go to the bottom of the seventh. Still tied three apiece. There are so many rewards in life. You coming into our home was one of the greatest rewards we could have ever had. You know, it took 20 years, and I got my third child, who was 17 at the time. It's so cool to watch the adult that you've become, and you really have done as much for us as you think we've done for you. to the seventh here in Circle Pines as Centennial hopes to walk it off here against Blaine. 3-3 our score. Last three and a half innings have been scoreless. 9-1-2 due up for Centennial. Here is Tyler Gruy leads things off and he's late on a fastball from Carter Amels. Gruy laid down a sacrifice butt and then struck out looking in the fourth. The balls with a beautiful breaking ball. Snaps it over the outside corner, 0-2. Struck out two of the three batters he faced in the bottom of the sixth. Looking to do the same to Gruy. Happening on the softball field. 
not far from here. No out, nobody on. Here's the 0-2. Called strike three on the outside corner. Another beautiful breaking ball from Amals. He's recorded three strikeouts on in relief of Ethan Pettis, the starter. Look at this, just snapped it off. Framed beautifully by McLean. Two straight Cougars set down looking. This is high with that one to Peyton Strait. Strait is exactly who Centennial would want up in this situation. He's two for three today with two singles and a run score. A 1 0 pitch missed high, way high. And it's 2 0. Oh. Copper Smith waiting on deck. Highlighted strike in the open. This is exactly what he does. Works the count, does what a leadoff hitter does, and gets aboard. 3-0 the count. Top, what you got Here's the pitch. That one at the belt for a called strike. It's been an inconsistent strike all day. And the count is 3-1. Strike, striking, uh, choking up on that bat. Fists it up the middle. A seeing eye single for Peyton Strike. His third base uh, reach of the day. He's three for four in the leadoff spot. So now they'll be he'll be taken down for a pinch runner. As there's one on and one out here in the bottom of the seventh. Didn't get the best contact on it, but just had enough muscle to get it past Ryan Burley up the middle. So now Blaine hoping to turn two. And I'm gonna have a meeting on the mound. Pitching coach goes off, goes uh, out to talk strategy. Or perhaps make a pitching change. The winning run is standing at first base for Centennial here as they've got two, three, four due up. Coppersmith and then Leisure, and if either one of those should reach, Jack Diagostino. Leisure, he is two for three himself today with a run. Big moment here for the junior, Carter Amals. Tied here in the bottom of the seventh with a runner on and one out. Snap throw to first. It gets away from the first baseman. But the uh, runner does not advance. Another throw to first. Check on the runner. Team with a steal today. Caden Coppersmith walked and scored in the first. He's also reached on an air. Two reaches, but only one official plate appearance. He's late on that fastball. Swings through it for strike one. goes and bounces in there and he'll move into second without a throw. Smart job about running on a breaking ball, which again the catcher McLean couldn't handle, so allowed the runner to move into scoring position here with only one out in the inning and one and one the count. Opportunity here for Caden Coppersmith. Here's the pitch. Coppersmith shoots it over the shortstop's head into left field. They're waving the runner home. The throw to the plate will not be in time. Centennial walks it off. 
four to three in the season opener. Caden Coppersmith muscled it over the shortstop Burley's head. And that was more than enough. Big credit to Peyton Strife, the shortstop. Three for four on the day. And his run, the go-ahead one, the game-winning run is that pinch runner came around to score. Just a little bloop single in front of the left fielder, Schloman. And Centennial opens the season with a dramatic four to three win here, walk-off fashion as the two teams shake hands. Interviews up next from the field, four to three, the final score, Centennial wins the season opener here at home. Bill Hop back here at Centennial High School after the Cougars' dramatic 4-3 opening day win over Blaine. I'm here with two of the heroes of the game, Caden Coppersmith and Josh Lee. And, uh, Caden, let's start with you. You drove in the game-winning run. What was your approach uh, facing a pretty tough pitcher in uh, Carter Amos? Uh, well, I just made an error the inning before, and with the game on the line, I was like, let's go. Got to get the boys back. Got to make up for it. Yeah, that had to feel good, yeah, oh yeah. getting a little redemption after that, that ole there at third base, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. Definitely felt good. Now, what was your approach? Did you just try to, to go up the middle with it? What was your approach in, in, the, in that at bat? Just to try to hit the ball hard somewhere with a wide drive. Just try to get it in play, knowing that he, after he stole second, just try to get it in play somewhere so he could score. Because I, I know my brother, he's really fast. So. Yeah, I was going to say, your brother was at first base, and you drove him in with the game-winning run. That must have been pretty cool for the Coppersmiths. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was sweet. It was awesome. Uh, Josh Lee, meanwhile, you came on in relief, uh, retired the first nine batters you faced, and kind of settled this team down after they'd given up a couple runs early on. Uh, what was your approach coming into the game here in the third inning? You know, I just knew coming in relief I needed to give the guys some energy, and I just knew I had to go do my job, and that's what I did. Um, do you expect to, to start most of the season or come on in relief? or have you? What, what's your role this in your senior, senior season? I think from here on out, I'll probably start most of the season. Um, what is the, the mentality of this team here? Um, you guys were 15-10 uh, and 10 last year, came just short of going to state. Uh, what is the mentality of a very senior-led team this year for the Cougars? Yeah, we want to get we want to get to state. We want to win this section, do what we couldn't do last year. Well, you're off to a great start. This year, a dramatic win for the Cougars on opening day for A.V. Beckers, for director Ted LaRue, Tim Shingen, and the rest of our crew at North Metro TV. I'm Bill Hutt saying good evening from Circle Pines. Centennial wins the season opener in dramatic fashion over Blaine 4-3. to three.